Happy New Year's, everybody. I got a video for you. That's not for you. It's for me. Now, when I say that, I say it to say, you see the title, right? It is the five-year anniversary of 2013, because that's how math works. And officially, it's the last day that that statement could be used. And this is a video idea I want to use literally the 364 days, but I was too lazy to do it. But one thing reminded me that this video needed to be done, and it was because of the internet by Childish Gambino, one of the most artistic rollouts of the recent decade might not even been the most artistic rollout of this year. And I'm going to expound upon that as I go through what I'm trying to tell y'all here. Our first, first little, first little portion, you know, first little, little meat, my personal favorites, okay? Now, I'll be honest with you, there's not much organization to this video. It's going to be a little bit long and drawn out, and I hope you can stick there, stick here with me while I go through it, because this is going to be a meaty video, but maybe not organized. Now, when I say my personal favorites, I don't remember all of them, I'll be honest with you. I've, there's a lot of albums that came out. But here's something I can think off the top of my head right now. I have Acid Rap by um, Chance the Rapper, you know, pre Christian, uh, <laughs> pre Kurt Franklin, <laughs> Chance the Rapper. Because of the Internet by Childish Gambino, Doors by Earl Sweatshirt, Wolf by Tyler the Creator, Pure Heroin by Lord with an E, and In a Tape, which is a mince tape. But basically an album. I guess Acid Rap is also in this tape. But it's also basically an album. Um, by Vic Mensa before he became a cornball. Now, let's scroll over to here. This list by Sharif, Sheriff The Reels. Sharif. Sheriff The Reels off of KTT. A lot of these albums I really mess with heavily. In, so I don't want to list all of these out. I just want to go through it with you for a second. Watch a movie The Sounds is off. I thought that was about a 9 out of 10, and might have been Mac Miller's best project, R.I.P., but it was fantastic, and beat out Yeezus and Born Center the same day, um, crushed Born Center, maybe the only big-name flop I can think of in 2013, but it wasn't it wasn't a bad album, but it gets a lot of bad rep, and it kind of, it's a long listen. Yeezus, uh, kind of the transition between to our current Kanye probably his most polarizing John, maybe. Okay, we're back. I'm sorry I had to do this so roughly, but I think people need to see these albums themselves. And uh, when I say that, I mean, you need to see this, this album right here. Jai Paul. I'm going to summarize how, how many great albums came out with a demo tape that's, that didn't even mean to come out. Jai Paul's Jai Paul, self-titled, featuring... Jasmine, Genevieve, Straight Outta Mumbai, and BTS to You, which I guess is also a single that popped out beforehand. But I mean, literally, maybe the most enigmatic electro producer slash artist in recent memory, maybe ever, with arguably the best tape that came out this year that wasn't even finished. Just incredible. That such a story even exists. Nothing else worth noting. Oh yeah, six foot, six feet beneath the moon, the King Cruel debut. And speaking of debuts, my second step, my second um, reason why I like 2013 so much was the the breakthroughs for young artists. Uh, the early 2010s featured quite a bit of uh, breakthroughs, and I don't think any were as prevalent as Lords, of course, an album that literally gave her a um, a parachute that float on for four years until the release of a um, melodrama. And well, along with Lore, you had aforementioned Acid Rap. You had Better Off Dead by um, Flappers Zombies. You had, let's see, what else do we have here? Did Trap Lord come in 2013? I guess it did. Trap Lord came out. Um, I never liked Trap Lord that much, but I don't like Ace That Furry that much. But I can respect if people say it's a good tape because it was all right. It was decent. 
overgrown by James Blake of that wasn't his breakthrough per se. I guess it might have, but the James Blake's EPs, uh, they were pretty good. They were pretty good. But this is his first album, so we'll just say it's his breakthrough, I think. I loved Overgrown, by the way. The first half was a classic. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? My Name is My Name. That wasn't... Was that a push T breakthrough? It might have been. I don't know. Depends on why you want to look at that. But PND1, uh, Party Nest Doors, first... I believe that was his first tape. Had Break from Toronto, uh, Welcome to the City... Uh, Wild Bitches, which was Break from Toronto, is probably my favorite song of 2013. So I mean, this that that alone would be enough for me. Uh, Earl Sweatshirt's return came indoors, so I mean, that, I guess that counts as a breakthrough. One take. That's what we that's what we do around here. Anyway, moving on to the next portion of this video. The big names coming through. I mentioned Kanye. I didn't mention Drake and his, um, what was Nothing Was The Same? Nothing Was The Same was a really good album for Drake standards. I don't think it's been superseded by any album album from Drake since. If you're reading this, it's a better project, but it's not an album. By his, by his own words, I believe, he said. Although with Drake saying what an album is and what it isn't, it's kind of just fluctuate, fluctuating. You had Daft Punk with the Almighty, the the, the God blessed, the Sun kissed, from Random Assets Memories, which I believe is their last album they've came out with. I don't think they came out with an album since 2013, which is very very unfortunate. It was, I mean, it was when one album of the year over. Did it go? I think it went head to head against Lord and Drake and one. So that tells you enough about how good an album this was. Uh, ASAP Rock, I mentioned him, The Weeknd. A lot of people want to know how you follow up a trilogy. And in my opinion, Kissland has an untouchable aesthetic to it. I think some of the best aesthetics. Aesthetics. <laughs> Aesthetics. Let me let me tell you just how aesthetic this was. This is my background right now while I was recording this video. I have I have a, a rotating background, right? I believe one fifth of the, the backgrounds I have all come from Kiss Land and its release. I guess some of the images he put on Tumblr and stuff like that. It it the album isn't even like that good really, to be honest with you. Like the first five songs are classic the rest is just kind of drones on but the art the merch the um is it a bear the bear cat the, the the bear cat what's it called and you know the red panda cat it just it just works some people call the red panda bear but we're not here to discuss a red panda cat slash bear we're here to discuss 2013 and so far i feel like i'm doing a pretty good job of doing that and as I like to go to my fourth step here, I like to talk about the singles. This is a very good year for singles. 2018, I feel like it's been a pretty piss poor year for singles, let's be honest with you. But 2013, some of the names I just pointed out, because this is this is the end of the year song, so I'm going to miss on a couple of things. But I think that, um, to be honest with you, that you could you could pull out pretty much any single list from top 100. Be pretty good, like here. Adorn. This is eighty fourth. This is one of the best songs that came out this year. You don't even know it. This is one of the few. Wait, this. This is the. <laughs> this was the put a Molly in the drink. Shaney and Noah. This song. Yo, it took Rick Ross like two or three years to come back from this, and this was the like Me Too era. If Rick Ross said this in twenty eighteen. His career would have ended at that moment. Bugatti, Ace Hood's breakthrough single, probably his only single that matters. That power, pretty much in like every advertisement, I think of 2013. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. That's what I got to say. Uh, F and Problems by ASAP Rocky. I think this is still ASAP Rocky's biggest song. 
the only one I can think of that might be bigger is the one that came out with Skepta this year. Um, I don't know what the hell it's called, but you know what song I'm talking about. Uh, hold on, we're going home. Start from the bottom. I mean, scream and shove and let it all out. Bruno Mars did his thing like pretty much every year in the early 2010s. Of course, the god himself, Macklemore. <laughs> What 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 <laughs> what what? <laughs> Yo, Drift Shop. I don't care if people chill about Macklemore. Drift Shop is one of the funniest singles that's coming out, that's came out in any year ever. It's just hilarious to me personally. If you don't take it serious, it's pretty good. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, those are some of the greatest singles that came out this year. I'm gonna try to push through this. FKA Twigs Water Me. Oh, yeah, FKA Twigs dropped an EP, and I forgot about that. FKA Twigs dropped an EP. Janelle Monet dropped the whole album. Her last, was that her last non pandering album? No, nah, I'm, I'm not going to disrespect um, the album that came out this year. It was pretty decent, but it wasn't The Electric Lady. I think that's what it's called, Electric Lady. Sky Ferrer, she dropped the, um, the album that had everything is embarrassing. Which is one of my favorite songs from this year too. Everything is embarrassing. Beyonce dropped Beyonce, which had an unholy amount of singles on it. Too many singles on it, one might say. There's a lot of good tracks that came out this year. A lot of good singles. A lot of good singles. Shout out to Pitchfork. And my final step, my final step to Describing how great 2013 was musically. None other than Kendrick Lamar. And the run he had coming off of Good Kid, Man City. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I followed hip hop from about 20, to about 2011, maybe 2012. There's nobody, and I, I would say nobody, that had the run of quality, not quantity, quality since 2011 that like Kendrick Lamar has had artistically in late 2012 to 2013 now i wish these mother would get out the fucking way i'm just gonna listen i'm just gonna just just peep through this and i mentioned a couple other things this is where 2013 starts at live in my bed i don't know what that is nobody else knows what that is yolo that was a really funny track by, by lonely island it, it wasn't the greatest but it was funny how many drinks I still throw this on from time to time on my uh, night playlist, which is where I write through the night, like a goon and a goblin. And this is a really good track. Uh, Kendrick Lamar did his thing on here. We up. Kendrick Lamar made a 50 cent song listenable. So, I mean, that's enough right there. Looking good with trouble. Looks good with trouble. Didn't listen to it. But it had Solange and Kendrick on it, so it was a classic. Memories back then. Now, if you ever listen to this, it... It's not like it's not like the most amazing track that just ever came out. But T.I. had one of his better verses post his prime. B.O.B. had a non asshole verse, which is hard for B.O.B. because the man is allergic to good music sometimes when it comes to promo singles. But um B.O.B. did his thing. The videos was really good, by the way. One of the better videos of 2013. What, I didn't speak on videos, but I may do it in a separate video if y'all want to see that. Kendrick Lamar killed his thing. The whole nostalgia kind of feel with it, with, with their verses. He did his, he did the best, but it was really close to the other two. Uh, Compton's Finest, Hope right. I think he worked with her on some of the bonus tracks for GKMC. I think he did. I think, I think he did. That was a good try. I only listened to it in passing. Collard Greens, I mean, if you haven't listened to Collard Greens, man, Kendrick, Schoolboy school Q definitely did his thing, but Kendrick, goodness gracious. Forbidden Fruit, I wish Kendrick Lamar rapped on this because he would have floated on this. If he brought the vibes he brought with uh, How Many Drinks, he would have floated on that song. Give it to you. I don't know if it ain't like really just it's terrible tracks on blurred lines. They're, they're all really good, pretty much. Jealous. I think it was Fredo's. This was like Fredo's biggest song on Spotify, I think. It may still be. I know it was at one point. It was really good. Uh, 
something different from Fredo, you know. Does the Star Wars show come in 2014? I swear to God it didn't. If this came in 2014, it had to be like February, January. I remember Radioactive because it was performed at the VMAs. Either the VMAs or the Grammy. And they performed the remix live. And the show was so hyped that I, I can't even... I can't even promote it. the show. Like hearing a song by itself, it's not that interesting. But the build up and the fire, the pyrotechnics that they used, yo, that song's incredible. They made me like the most hyped rock and rap collab since like it's like Jay Z and Lincoln Park. <laughs> it might be man. And uh, yeah, nostalgia. I want to mention that this is 2014. At this point, that's a really good song. You need to listen to it. Uh, Never Catch Me, also one of the better songs. I've, I played that song for like years afterwards. And I won't go in for the 2014, but please go listen to Never Catch Me. Please, I beg. Anyway. I'm Machiavelli's offspring. I'm the king of New York, king of the coast. One hand, I juggle them both. Egg. I heard the barbershops being great debates all the time about who's the best MC, Kendrick, Jigger, and Nas. Eminem, Andre 3000, the rest of y'all. New niggas, just new niggas, don't get involved. I'm usually homeboys with the same niggas I'm rhyming with. But this is hip hop, and them niggas should know what time it is. And that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale. Push a T, Meek Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, J Electron, Tyler McMiller. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. They don't want to hear not one more now, no verb from you niggas. What is competition? I'm trying to raise the bar high. Who's trying to jump and get it? You're a better off trying to skydive. I that, yo. And then he got the BT cipher. Which we can scroll over that real quick, you know. I don't need to. I don't need to talk about all a little bit, but it is important that I at least show the lyrics, you know, because this was supposed to be like because the trailer leaked beforehand, and um, God, what was it? Um, it showed the part that I'm going to speak about really for the main part, where it seems like he dissed whoever. I think it, I think it was a Drake that came out the language before this had came out. And it was thought of as like a response to that, you know. So that's what made it pretty cool, in my opinion. And they just only showed the one part that matters because, you know, this nothing else matters after this point. I tucked the sense of the rapper back in his pajama clothes. Ha ha. Don't zone you. High five. I'm bulletproof. The crowd that spoke after that. Whew. Anyway. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar. I hope he I hope he gives us one more year of just hip hop supremacy before it's all over with because I think it's at this point where he's just trying to like, you know, fade out of the industry. He's already given given us more than enough classic material. And I hope that some of the people that were eating in twenty thirteen can give us some more um dinner. Maybe even some dessert. Um, Vic Vincent, I'm looking at you specifically. Damn cornball. See y'all later.